Chris, great to have you on History Hit today. It's a pleasure to be with you. Now we are talking at the Natural History Museum at the Earth Sciences Library. And are you ready? This is the big one, the quick fire story of human evolution. Well, I'll do my best. Well then, let's get going. Let's start with this, this replica right at the end here. What is this? What, how does this fit into our story? Okay, so this is a, a replica skull of our, re our closest relative. It's a recent chimpanzee. There are two species of chimpanzee. So this is one of them. And you can see there that, yes, it's got all the same elements in its skeleton that we've got, but they're differently shaped. Got a small brain there, great big face pulled forwards, and especially these big interlocking canine teeth. And let's see how that goes to that and modern Homo sapiens. Yeah. Now, the first name I've got on my list, forgive me if I butcher the pronunciation of it, is Sahleanthropus. What is this? How does this fit into the yes. story? Yes, so Sahelanthropus. Um, so this is a creature that was living in Chad. So what's now, you know, the, the northern central Africa. Uh, now mostly desert. But six to seven million years ago, this place was well watered with lakes and rivers. And there were sort of ape-like creatures living there. Sahelanthropus is one of them. So fossils were found uh, in the early 2000s. And there's a, a skull bit squashed, but it's a skull that's kind of chimpanzee size, chimpanzee size brain. Uh, but what's interesting is the canine teeth are much smaller. So it looks more human. And there are also, there's a leg bone and two arm bones of Sahelanthropus. And a bit of dispute about those. So on some interpretations, Sahelanthropus looks like it could walk upright. Other people doubt that that was so. So a lot we don't know about this stage. So this creature could be close to our common ancestor with the chimpanzee, which geneticists estimate was about 7 million years ago. So it's close to that common ancestry, but whether it's really on the human line, I think is not yet clear. So then moving on from that, that potential first hominin, first human, what's this next skull, the one that we've got on display next? Yeah, so this is the, represents the Australopithecine stage, the mm. southern ape stage of evolution. So between about two and four million years ago, uh, there were creatures uh, living in various parts of Africa, um, which definitely are on the human line. So their skeletons show that they walked upright. Their, their hip bones, their thigh bones, their feet show that they could walk upright. Um, but other parts of their skeleton shows that they, if you like, hadn't completely abandoned the trees. So their arms, their hand bones, their shoulders suggest that they were still also living in the trees. So on the ground, they could walk quite well on two legs, but in the trees, they could climb much better than we can. So an interesting kind of halfway house in human evolution, if you like, clearly on the human line, but the brain size is still ape size, uh, but the teeth show human features. And these are creatures which, you know, were probably you know, heading towards humanity, but still in many ways, if we could look at how they were living, how they appeared, they would have looked very ape-like to us, even though they were walking upright. And so how long is the age of the Australopithecine? And are they also using stone tools by then? Is, is that arrived yet? Yes, yeah, so stone tools are, are in the, the, the archeological record from over three million years ago. So the suggestion is that some form of Australopithecine was already making and using tools. And of course they may well have been using wood, materials like wood, and all the evidence has vanished of that. Okay, so what follows the age of the Australopithecine? So we get into early Homo, early humans, genus Homo. Um, and there are species like Homo habilis and uh, Homo rudolfensis. Um, and these were still in Africa at this stage. So for the first five billion years or so that we know of, human evolution is taking place only in Africa. So there's Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis. These are still, you know, ape-sized brains or only slightly bigger, walking upright, probably using tools. But then around two million years ago, we get the appearance of something that is clearly much more human, Homo erectus. And this is a representative fossil of Homo erectus. Uh, and this one is from China. But this species is the longest lived human species, lasting for nearly two million years. And the first, as far as we know, to spread outside the ancestral homeland of Africa. And as you mentioned, so these reach as far as China in the Far East? That's right, yes. So they're found uh, in various parts of Africa, and they're also found in China and Indonesia, in Java, where in fact the first remains were identified. Just having that right next to the Australopithecine, you can really see the differences in the cranium shape, can't you? There are real different features to a Homo erectus compared to this predecessor. That's right, yes. Yeah. So they've both got a basically more human-like dentition, the teeth, but when you look at the brain size, for example, it's much larger, the face is smaller. Um, so this is overall much more human-like 
creature and in the skeleton too it's lost many of those hang-ons if you like which still suggested the Australopithecines were spending time in the trees. Okay so moving on from that what follows in the story after Homo erectus? Well there are some other species there's Homo antecessor which is known from Spain about 850,000 years ago um, but here we've got a representative of uh, a very well-known phase Homo heidelbergensis or Homo rhodesiensis. So these were around about 500,000 years ago, and again, they are uh, a step forward from Erectus in terms of brain size. The brain size is larger. Um, and these individuals were you know, known from Europe, they're known from Asia, they're known from Africa. And so this is a widespread species. Um, I used to think it was the common ancestor of us and the Neanderthals. I no longer think that. I think this is actually a, uh, a related branch, uh, perhaps even related to the Neanderthal branch. So we don't actually know who our common ancestor was between us and the Neanderthals. And what are some other types of homonyms that are around at the time of Heide Homo heidelbergensis, but before we really get to Homo sapiens? Yes, yeah, so we have obviously the lineages of other human forms, such as uh, Homo naledi, which is around in South Africa about 300,000 years ago. That must have a deep lineage alongside Heidelbergensis. And over in Southeast Asia, we've got Homo floresiensis evolving for uh, probably at least a million years on the island of Flores, and Homo lusinensis evolving for at least a million years uh, in the Philippines area. So all of these different lineages going alongside each other uh, for a period of time. And so what therefore follows this type of hominin? Yes, yeah, so when we move on from 500,000 years ago, uh, we see the appearance of the early Neanderthal lineage, the early Homo sapiens lineage in Africa, and over in the Far East, we've got the Denisovan lineage originating, although we don't have any fossils that represent that, that stage of evolution. In fact, we lack fossils really for the very early sapien stage in Africa, for the very early Neanderthal stage in Europe and Asia, and for the early Denisovan stage. But by the time we get to three or four hundred thousand years ago, we can find fossils which we can place on these different lineages. All right, Chris, well, let's talk therefore about the Neanderthals now. So talk to me about the time frame and the key features, what we know about this such, this interesting species. Yes, yeah, so this species evolved for several hundred thousand years in Europe and Asia, uh, very close relatives of ours, so they've got large brains, as big as ours, sometimes even bigger, um, and, you know, distinctive face, um, still some features in the skeleton which relate them back to these earlier humans. So it's still a robustly built skeleton, a big rib cage, maybe lungs, 20% more capacity than we have, a wide hip bone, so a very big trunk to the body, extremely muscular. A skeleton built to withstand a very demanding lifestyle. So it begs the question, why do we think this species went extinct? And of all species, it was the Homo sapiens that are now the dominant, the only Homo species on Earth? Yeah, I mean, that's a really big question. So why are we the only humans left? So I think that the disappearance of these other forms of humans was partly down to environmental factors and partly down to the spread of Homo sapiens. So as Homo sapiens spread into the region of the Neanderthals, for example, Homo sapiens would have been wanting to eat the same kind of food materials, hunt the same kinds of animals, want to live in the best cave sites and so on. So there was an economic competition between these populations. Um, and I think the Neanderthals actually were already low in numbers and diversity at this time. It wouldn't have taken too much to tip them over the edge into extinction. But of course it wasn't a complete extinction because we know there was a bit of interbreeding before the Neanderthals disappeared. So partly their DNA lives on in us. And that's true for Denisovans too. They disappeared as well maybe by 30,000 years ago, we don't really know, but their DNA also lives on in us today through ancient interbreeding. That's so amazing. So as you said there, and just to repeat, in people today, you and I, there is DNA of Neanderthals and potentially, or well, there is DNA of Denisovans too. In some people in the world, yes, Denisovan DNA. And even in Africa, there was probably ancient interbreeding with some of these other forms of humans that were living in Africa. Now, before we really start wrapping up with this, are there any homonyms, homotypes from the story of our evolution that you'd like to highlight now that you find particularly fascinating and aren't represented here? Well, yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we've learned about this, this thing called Dragoman in the last couple of years. So there's a beautiful fossil from Harbin in northeastern China, nicknamed Dragoman. Uh, I think it's a different species, Homo daliensis. So we'd, we'd have it here late in time. Uh, the fossil's 
over 150,000 years old, but it's big brained, very, very large skull, uh, but a face that is much more like our own face, but a brain case that is more like sort of the Neanderthal brain case. So it's a strange combination of features, a distinct line of evolution. It may well be the skull of a Denisovan, in fact, but we don't know that yet. Charles Darwin, do you think he was on the right lines, therefore? Absolutely. I mean, he said we pr probably originated in Africa. He was a bit cautious, but he said we probably originated in Africa. And, and he was rocked about that. Now, last but certainly not least, what do you think is the future of human evolution? That's a really difficult one. I get asked that very often. And of course, evolution doesn't have a forward look. It's about what works now. So predicting the future is very difficult. I can say that, you know, we are facing an uncertain future. You know, the planet is going to change more in the next few hundred years than it's changed in many thousands of years before. So many challenges to come, and let's hope our species is up to the challenge. Absolutely. Well, let's, well, if only we had a crystal ball to put at the end of this row, you could have told us the answer. But, Chris, this has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for this quick-fire round of human evolution and thank you so much for taking the time to come on History Hit. It's a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for watching this video on the History Hit YouTube channel. You can subscribe right here to make sure you don't miss any of our great films that are coming out. Or if you are a true history fan, check out our special dedicated history channel, historyhit.tv. You're going to love it.